there and welcome to Thursdays with Annette. So glad you joined me today because once again I am donning my apron, I'm in the Simply Too Good kitchen and I'm going to make you a fantastic recipe today out of book three. This is such an awesome book and the recipe that we're going to be doing today, oh yes, and even is that good, it gets the front picture, it's the chicken laksa. It is such a a fantastic recipe. It's not hard to make, so don't feel intimidated. And you know what? I'm going to show you how easy it is today. So sit back, relax, and get ready to be impressed with this great recipe. But before we get into it, let's talk about our gorgeous winners from last week's show. Now, last week I did the quick and easy potato bake, and um, Linda Flynn was very happy that she um, won a prize. Maurice Chesterfield was another winner, and Lynn Vanny and they are all getting some copies in the mail. Actually, one of them picked the shakes because uh, I gave you the choice. Because you remember last week, um, we launched the fantastic um, dairy-free vanilla. Now, just remember all my shakes are gluten-free, nut-free and artificial free. So they're super delicious. So we're very excited to be able to provide that service for those that can't have dairy. And it's delicious. So, all right. Let's think about this recipe. It is, it's got a few ingredients in it, but it's not hard to make, okay? So we're gonna, we've got my cooking spray here, and I've got my trusty new little wok here that I'm in love with, so stay tuned on that one coming soon. But this is what you use um, when you're using the really good quality um, fry pans. Uh, because it doesn't have any ingredients but oil in it and it's the rice bran oil spray because some of them have sugar and things in them and this is the good one. All right, so we also need some garlic, some ginger. Now, of course, you can use your fresh garlic and ginger. I won't judge you for it. In fact, I'll be impressed if you want to do your own but I'm a lazy cook and I want it just done like that. I've got um, 400 grams of skinless chicken breast. Um, lemongrass, got some fresh lemongrass. Oh my God, I love it. I've got carrot, capsicum. Now, in this recipe, we only do half a cup, but I'm going to do a little bit of both because in the dish, it just really looks fantastic when you put a little bit of the red and the green together. You don't have to, but I love that. We need shallots, we need bean um, sprouts, turmeric. This is the key to it all, is the maximum curry paste. So that's the thing that really brings this laksa alive. I mean... Who can be bothered trying to make your own paste? I'm sorry, MasterChef. No, I'm going with the bought one. I've also got a, a, the um, salt-reduced chicken um, stock water, you know, the chicken stock. So that's going to be used. I've got um, coconut essence. I've got, uh, did I do shallots and coriander? And these are the Singapore noodles we're going to put in. So you need one and a half cups of that. We also need some water, corn flour, and the evaporated light milk. And I'll talk to you all about the recipe as we go, but I'm excited to get chopping here because I think we've got a, a great recipe to enjoy today. All right, so I'm gonna start first with the carrot. Now we need half a cup of carrot slice. So what you do is I'm gonna take the ends off and I'm gonna cut this into three. I don't think we need all the carrot, um, but let me just show you. And now, if you were watching last week's show, what did I do with the potato? Do you remember? That's right. To make it easier when you're chopping round things, just cut off a section like that. And what that does, it means it sits really secure. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to, because it's in strips, because let's make it authentic. We don't want slices, you know, like you know, grated or in big chunks. It's all about the strips and this is a good length for it. So I go down, not too thick, not too thick. We need half a cup and here again, I'm going to turn that around. I might just do this one as well. So remember, see how like that moves around because it's rolling. It's just safer with your knife, because these knives are really sharp, my knives, and then you can just go down and cut into strips. I don't think I'll need that. Now what we do is we go back in to these cut strips and make them fine. Just, can you see how they are? See, that's perfect. And we need half a cup. Now, larks are, 
is actually a dish that comes from Southeast Asia. Now we can't travel that much at the moment, but we can certainly enjoy their food, can't we? So this is what Larks is all about. And it is, if you've been following my cookbooks for a while and you haven't made it, my gosh, people, what's wrong with you? It is fabulous. I know someone said to me the other day, oh, I've always shied away from it because I thought, oh, it could be really hard to make. But you're going to see today, it is super, super easy. Now we want half a cup. Let's see how I'm going here. And it's pretty too. It just looks really pretty in, the, in your bowl. Yes, I think if we do these, we are going to be great. All right. Cutting into the strips. I don't, if you noticed, I didn't peel my carrots because basically I think that they're so clean now. Years ago, you know, back in the olden days, they used to be quite dirty carrots and you would have to um, cut, peel the skin off. But with these ones now, I think they wash them, which makes sense, and we don't have to peel them. And that way we're getting extra, um, you know, vitamins and that. So I'm going to put my carrots in here. So they're ready to go. Now we're going to do the capsicum. So I need half a cup. So I'm going to cut some couple of strips. Now this is where I just want to be a little bit technical with this recipe and I want to sort of cut the ends off. I want to keep them similar in size. So see there, perfect. Same with this one. Put it on top, okay, that little bit there. And that way we're getting a really good similar size to our slices. All right, let's move that out of the way. Now, as I said, with the carrot, same thing with the capsicum. Cut them into strips. See, they'll, be, they'll look the same. Just take a bit of that white off if you have any on your capsicum. And look, I love the, the look of having the two colours, as I said. Um, but you know what? You can have any colour you like. But hello, if you've just joined me, um, I'm making a recipe out of book three. I can't look up while I'm not, um, chopping because otherwise I might cut myself. It's a great recipe. It's chicken laksa out of book three. Yeah. Now, it can be frozen for two or three weeks. Uh, if you, you know, you don't, if the, it serves four, but if there's only two of you, I mean, what the heck, just have it a couple of nights later and enjoy it, but you can freeze it if you wish. Now, normally, this recipe is so high in saturated fat, and that's because of the coconut cream. But no, and it does not do high saturated fat, thank you very much, that's why we're using the evaporated milk. All right, so we only need half a cup. I probably don't need all this, but let's have a look. Yeah, that's good. All right, so let's get that over here. I will eat some of this later, put it into a salad. <laughs> all right, now we're going to cut up the shallots. Now we need a half a cup and you just want to slice them. So look, I'm so glad you joined me today because I feel like it's my little catch up with you. Like it's like friends getting together, isn't it, on a Thursday and Tuesday. And um, I just think, uh, you know, I know poor Melbourne, you know, my heart goes out to you guys. You know, this might give fill your day a little bit. Stay safe, guys. But don't, you know, just realise it will end. And I also really want to send some love to Sydney as well because they're facing a few problems there as well. I mean hopefully this will all get fixed sooner rather than later. But in the meantime we're here having fun in my kitchen so I'm so glad you, you join me each week. Now we want half a cup of shallots. That looks good. Here's my little cup measure. See, what we do is we've got to prep it all up ahead. You know, that's how I roll. Make it up ahead like all this. And then 
what are we going to do? That's right, we're going to chuck it in the pot. So I'm going to leave that over there because that comes in later. Now, what else have I got to do? I've got to do the lemongrass. Now, let me show you a, an easy way to do lemongrass. We want a teaspoon. So what I'm going to do, and if Billy, zoom in on it, Dale. Yes, oh, he's a good cameraman. I'm going to cut down the middle. Then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to cut it down as well. So you've got little quarters. And now it's really easy to just slice it in thin strips. So you're just cutting it, but cutting it that way makes it so much easier, doesn't it? It's quite a, a firm, um, what do you, is it a vegetable or just a herb? What do we call it? Bill says a herb. All right, so we want a teaspoon. So let me get my little teaspoon out. And that's looking great. So I'm going to put that in with the shallots. All right, so there's our lemongrass done. And lastly, we've got to chop up here before we get into the chicky is we've got to do coriander. So what we need for coriander is we need a tablespoon. Now, I, I find this really easy. Watch what I do. I, do you notice I just chop the leaves off because we don't want the sticks or the stems. I get it all really tight in my hand like this and then just slice it. It just seems a quicker, easier way. I mean, the chefs make it look so easy, don't they? Now what you're going to do is you're going to hold your finger down here and it really does make it easier to chop it. If you're doing it like this, see how noisy that is? This is really crunching in and getting your coriander chopped. So if you're saying, oh, you've lost me, Annette, oh, hey, coriander, because you know you're either in or you're out with coriander, I personally love it. But if you don't, I would say Thai basil might be a good one. All right, tablespoon, let's put it in with all that greenery. I'm just going to take this over to the, the sink. And see how I put a little sponge underneath? That's my little trick so that my board doesn't move while I'm cooking. So there you go. So everything's ready now, but one thing. That's right, the chicken. Now, I don't know what type of chicken we're growing here, but that looks like a turkey breast to me. It's huge. So let me just show you, I'm going to swap knives. I, I tend to take the fillet off because it gets, it's a bit annoying when you're trying to cut it and we'll just cut it separately. But how I do this, instead of trying to get through these really thick chicken, what I'm going to do is if you get stuck with a big chicken breast, just slice through it. There we go. Two pieces there. And this is 400 grams. This serves for this dish. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them into strips. You don't want the pieces of chicken to be really big because, you know, it's a laksa. You don't want really big chunks. So I'm going to dice it fairly small. Now, if you're making this for a vegetarian, you would replace the chicken with uh, about 300 grams of firm tofu. And if you look in the recipe, if you've got it already at home, I give you another variation as well, and that is a seafood laksa. I know. So what you do with that is you replace the 400 of chicken with, I think it's 200 grams of bonus fish fillet and 200 grams of raw green prawns. And uh, I've done that a few times. It's really nice. So if you like seafood, that's a good go-to. All right, so there's our chicken, good to go. So let me just move this over, wash my little hands a bit there, I'll come back and do that again. And it's time to cook, hello, yay. Let me move this and bring our cooktop over. Let's fire up. Let me get the spoons out of the way. Are you ready to cook? Okay, so here we go coat of cooking spray. Now what we're going to do is I want to heat this pan up 
before I start putting the chicken in. But what, we're, what we've done so far, if you're just joining me, you've got a lot to catch up with, Dale, because I've chopped up carrot and um, carrot and capsicum into strips. It's Chicken Larks, so book three we're making. I've diced 400 grams of chicken breast, skinless. I've got the um, shallots done, half a cup of shallots, cori uh, coriander tablespoon, and lemongrass teaspoon. And then we're gonna start cooking. Okay, in we go with the chicken. Just remember, a little bit at a time, don't go in too quickly. Let that sizzle go. We want that to seal the chicken. And I think, you know what, I often do this for dinner parties, to be honest, because I think people just love a laksa and it's something that you don't tend to make at home. But now you will, I hope. So let me move this over. I'll wash my hands in my soapy sink. So good to have that there. It's funny how I have my routine. I've got my rubbish bin here. I've got all my utensils there so I can grab it as I go. All the ingredients is out on the bench and I've got my soapy sink. And that way I can really power away in the kitchen. All right, so what we're gonna add now to the chicken is half a teaspoon of garlic, crushed garlic. And a teaspoon of crushed ginger. Traditionally, this dish would have to be, oh gosh, 30, 35 grams of fat a serve, which, you know, if you're a diabetic or you've got heart problems or you're wanting to lose weight, it's not going to help you, Dale, at all. And the thing is, my version is only 4.2 grams of fat. I know, I know, it's fabulous. But you know what, it's Diabetes Awareness Week, right this week. And if you go onto my website, you'll see right now you can get um, my fantastic Diabetes Essential eBook. It's got recipes, it's got tips, it's a really good resource for those that are diabetic. Um, you know, so if you know someone, lead them to it because it's a really great eBook. All right, so now, chicken is looking great, so we're gonna now throw in the carrot and the capsicum. Okay, so mixing it through. See how the colour, if I could look at the colour there, you've got the, um, the red, the green, the orange. I'm all about visual because, you know, we do eat with our eyes a lot, don't we? So you're going to cook that for a couple of minutes. Just cook them off. But I'm going to rush ahead because you know, we'll be here all day otherwise. So now what we do is we throw in everything else, except the last thing we're gonna do is the evaporated milk. So in goes, what have we got in here? We've got shallots, coriander, and the lemongrass. Let's toss them in with the chicken. Oh my gosh, I just think it's um, one of those recipes that is a little bit fizzy and remember, it's out of book three. All right, so now we're going to put in the bean sprouts. I love these. Um, the re recipe I love them in is my um, Chinese omelette. It's a fantastic one with that in it. And I just like to stir them in as we go, just so they all combine together. Perfect. Now what we're going to do, let me get rid of that, is let's put in the paste, the massimum, which is a tablespoon. Now, if you're a person that just says, bring on the chilli, well, put in the tablespoon, taste it at the end, and then decide. Don't just go, oh, let's put two tablespoons in, because it is quite strong, okay? So let's mix that massimum paste in there. Oh, yeah. Now we're going to put in a teaspoon of turmeric and this will give it that really fantastic yellow colour that you relate to with a laksa. So teaspoon. Let's put in a teaspoon of the um, chicken stock powder. And normally this is you know, a really high salt dish. So what I've done here is I've helped you out by doing the Massel um, stock, which is a lower sodium 
uh, stock um, powder, as well as the the stock. It's it is um, where's my scissors? It is a low salt one as well. If you're doing vegetarian, you'll get a vegetarian um, stock liquid. You don't want to put the chicken in for the vegetarian. We want a cup. There we go. See how hard this is? Oh, it's not hard. Stop it. We're going to put also a, tea, a, a cup of water in because we want lots of sauce with this and a teaspoon of coconut essence. Now, if you have had trouble finding coconut essence, just go to your IGA store. I think they're most of the ones that have it now. It's not in Coles or in Woolworths anymore. Oh my gosh, this is looking a bit fabulous and the smells are amazing. Now, can I just tell you, have you been watching The Voice? Because we're into the finals on Sunday. And did you know my niece is Stella Perry? I know, she's fabulous. So I'm not going to try and you know, swing the votes, but vote, vote, vote for her because I wanted to win. She's an amazing talent. She's a wonderful girl. I love her dearly and I'm so proud of her. So we've had a lot of fun watching her each week. Yeah, I cry every week. It's just crazy. All right, so here we go. We're in. We've just got to put in our noodles. Now, these are what really make the whole dish come together. So let's, you get two bags like this in the packet. You know, let me just show you. Let's see, that's what we're no using, Singapore noodles. And we want a cup and a half. So let's, this actually is a cup and a half. So I've measured it, haven't I? I'm Bill's just saying, you put the whole packet in. So we don't need to measure, but break it up. If you can't have the Singapore noodles because you're gluten intolerant, then use rice noodles. Oh, look at this. How fabulous. I just love cooking for you guys. And thank you for being here each week supporting the show. I mean, on Tuesday's show, I'm going to be making, I'll be back in the kitchen again every Tuesday, Thursday, and I'm going to be making a, a great pie. It's an apple berry pie. It's out of book six. And if you've been like me and go, oh, it's pastry. Oh, no. Well, I've got to tell you, this is the easiest. You don't even put it in a pie dish. And that's where it often can be hard, isn't it, trying to put it in the pie dish. Watch me next Tuesday. You can download the recipe from the website if you don't have book six and cook it with me because I think you're going to be excited about it because it's a bit fabulous. And um, next Thursday, I thought we need a soup. It's getting cold. And I think we all need a really great soup that's, that's easy to make because people go, oh, I can't be bothered. No, join me next week because it's all about soup. And it is the... Um, creamy chicken and vegetable soup, can of evaporated milk, tablespoon of corn flour, done and dusted, serves for 4.2 grams of healthy fats. Oh, wowee, how gorgeous is this? Yum! Now, I've just got to wait for this to thicken a little and you can serve up. Now, as I said, it serves four. It's one of those great recipes. Do you want to win book um, three? Of course you do. So here we go. This is the book you want to win. You've just got to like, share, and in the comments, you need to do, I haven't even got it. Billy, where is it? Oh, I'll tell you what. Do you know what you've got to do? Hashtag simply number two good, and you'll go in the draw to win Book three, so hashtag simply with a Y, number two, good. Yes, well, there you go. And you'll be able to win a prize. So that's fantastic. We all love to be winners in life. Now, remember, this is not the traditional recipe of the high fat, you know, 35 grams of fat. Mine is only 4.2. But what's really great about it as well is the low salt. It's only 469 milligrams when normally it would be off the Richter scale with the traditional laksa. I mean, when you look at this, you've got to say, 
Who knew weight loss could be so deliciously healthy? Yes, we're doing Southeast Asia here. It's fabulous. And um, I've got a bowl ready to go. I mean, let's go a little bit fancy smancy for, for um, our Thai dish. So that's ready to go. All I need for this to do is to boil. Now, the tip here is evaporated milk is not like coconut cream or coconut milk where you can boil the buggery out of it. No, evaporated milk is a little bit sensitive. So what you need to do is once it's boiled, you're done. Okay? So turn it off. Don't have it boiling away because it can separate. Um, you can still eat it. It's not a problem if it has separated, but it, it kind of just looks a bit yucky. That's all. Oh, I'm so excited to have this for dinner tonight. And I just think that with, you know, the recipes that you've, I've been making here each week, I just really get excited to show you how it is to live in my healthy world of living. I, I think it's fantastic. See, to me, I've been in my healthy weight range now for 27 years. And I have laksa. I have all the like, lasagnas and the potato bakes. And I'm going to be having blueberry, apple blueberry pie next week. I'm excited. And it's wonderful when you can take that guilt away that is associated when you're eating that type of food. It's all fantastic. All right, this is boiled. No, no, let me turn it up a little bit more. All righty. Just thicken a little. You want it to be a bit runny because it's kind of, not a soup, but it is sort of served in a bowl, not on a plate. Do not serve this on a plate. That's for sure. Let me get my ladle and let's serve it up. All righty. It is so good. You'll probably make it look a lot prettier than me. I'm slurping it all over the place. But here we go. Where's my little cloth? Another dish done in the Simply Too Good kitchen. There it is. Beautiful chicken laksa from book three. Thank you so much for joining me this week. And remember, vote, vote, vote for Stella. Take care. I'll see you on Tuesday. Bye now.